Hello everybody, welcome back to Cantrips. For y'all, it's only been two weeks, but for us, it's been... Two months. Years. Two months, yeah, Jesus. 84 years since I've seen the <laughs> dice. <laughs> what episode is this? Episode 17! As per usual, my name is Jamie, I will be your host and DM today, and here is my party. Hi, I'm Art. Hello, I'm Beck. Hi, I'm Kana. Hi, I'm Ben. Yay! And that's Yippee! all you fucking get. That's all you get that's now. All you get. <laughs> we did this bit already. We can't do it again. We already berated them in one episode. I will do it every time. Uh, Connor, do you want to do the recap? Because you actually know what happened in the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Last time on Cantrip, Kieran got a dragon. That was that was the main big thing that happened in the episode that just came out. That didn't even happen in the last episode. And in the... Oh, true. That was the episode four. Never mind. Let me do that. Connor... <laughs> Last time. Okay, Jamie, do you know what happened or do you not know what happened? <laughs> I know what happened in episode 15. <laughs> Connor just started talking about the wrong episode. <laughs> Last time on Cantrip. <laughs> Last time on Cantrip, episode 16. Uh, we were at a tavern. It was called the National Sugar. <laughs> and Rome was investigating the dagger. The dagger of death that she bought from Rosie's. And we went and we visited the weaponsmith, Jeremy Jordan, and he said, man, that's that's weird. You should talk to <laughs> Valfie the Cleric. And we went to Valfie the Cleric, and Valfie the Cleric said, man, that's weird. You should take this to someone qualified. I don't know why you came to me. Uh, and also, uh, <laughs> Nephris spoke to Valfie about the runes, and she went, that's weird. Uh, let me know if that starts hurting. And then we left, and as we were leaving, to go to Macarin, Juniper appeared very threateningly on a horse, and 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 that is women when they love each other. That is that is that is love. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Connor's recap. <laughs> to that's sum it up, recap. no one in town was helpful, and yeah. then my girlfriend showed up. Women, women. <laughs> I do love that Jeremy Jordan is now a canonical figure in in the universe. Canonical Jeremy Jordan. I also love that we made it, so it's not just a guy named Jeremy Jordan. It is canonically pre-fame Jeremy Jordan. Like, you know, we spent the whole time telling him how great he wasn't singing, <laughs> how great he wasn't singing, and how he needed to leave his shopkeeping business to go to Broadway, Fantasy Broadway. <laughs> Fantastic! I feel like we could do a tiny little time skip, like pick up where we left off with Juniper, but Yay. assume that you have updated Juniper on what has happened. And also the others on who she is. <laughs> yes. Um, that part you could actually do. <laughs> we could actually roleplay that part. All right. But I just, I don't know, we don't need to, we don't need to spend any time in the episode actually updating the NPC on what we were all here for. <laughs> so we can assume that that's happened. No, we still have full season recap. <laughs> You've heard of spending 40 minutes on breakfast. Now let's spend 40 minutes on recap to an spend... NPC. <laughs> the road's so far, okay. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Play carry on my I'm road, so son. proud of you. Sit down. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> proud of you. This is so delightful. Connor's supernatural era is oh, is. I am delightful. in my supernatural era. So what episode are you on right now? I'm partway through season two. Episode... Seven, I'm up to. I'm so proud mm. of you. Mike and I are cheering you on. Wait, how much? <laughs> Season two, episode seven. Wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm also about to start a supernatural watch. So <gasps> I'm, I'm curious. Get him in the group chat. Back on track. Can trip. Can trip. <laughs> <Can't> trip. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've updated the others on who Juniper is. Mm -hmm. How would you? How would you introduce Juniper to the party? I think she literally, like, turns back to the group and does, like, the Will Smith gesture. <laughs> you know that sh that picture of Will Smith? Like, just going, yeah! <laughs> like, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> and I think she goes, this is my girlfriend. Hi there. Hello. And this is my f party. I, I... Neff's, like, waving. Hi. Aaron also waves. Hi, hi there. Um, na Names? Oh, do, do we want to go down the line, or do it? I, I'm Nephris. Lovely to meet you. Uh, I'm Dan. Hi. <laughs> I think Kieran has forgotten that we're supposed to be saying hi to people. Maybe waved, and I'm, I'm kind of going up to the horse. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> like, I don't think Kieran says his name or anything. I think he's just, like, slowly inching towards the horse and, like, reaching out to touch it when it's his time to say his name and then is startled. <laughs> That's That one's Kieran. That one's Kieran. It's, oh, all right. All right. They're new. Jamie, They're Jamie new. what's the uh, horse's name? Not- because I feel the horse, like I would know that. What's the horse's name? Because she would definitely know that. Oh, you absolutely would. Buttermint. Buttermint. <laughs> Butter. <laughs> it's buttermint, buttermint. now. <laughs> I think buttermint is the biggest horse you've ever seen. Oh, Karen is so enthralled. Like a big um, Clydesdale farm horse oh, with yeah. the fur on the ankles oh, that I love. Oh, things like that. Ah, ah. I'm this horse's biggest fan. <laughs> but yeah, we're a. Uh... We're uh we're on our way to what what what's it called? Macaron. Macaron. Macaron, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're 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 on our way to uh Macaron. Where where where'd you come from? Where have you been? Well, I went over to the coronation stuff. Oh well, I mean, I I stayed pretty close to home. I was I wasn't too far out, but I was not. I wasn't too far away from here when I I got your message. So, you know, hopped on the horse, head over, but uh, I wasn't doing much else. I was just wandering around. Babe, look at this. I'm going to pull the knife. What? What? Look at this thing. What is... Do you have any idea what this is? Because I don't. No, no. What is... is wow. We is went, glowy? Where'd we you get this? A store. Uh- <laughs> we went to the back of a store. We went to the. I, I'm sorry, I didn't include the store in my recap. We went because I wasn't thinking about the net. There was a lot. A lot has happened in the past few months, and um, has it weeks. been months or weeks? I'm not For, like, sure. Days. Days. <laughs> yeah. Has it been days, months, it's, weeks? I don't know. It's the been time... no more than two weeks. <laughs> okay, yeah. Wonderful. In the past two <laughs> weeks, a lot has happened. It it just feels like longer, you know, because so much has happened. It just feels like so much. But but we went to a store. Feels like it's been six months. We went... <laughs> <laughs> If this were a podcast, you know, it would probably be going for about six months. <laughs> Give or take. About seven, eight months, you know. I just picked this up and it attuned to me immediately. So, mystery. We're on a mystery solve in case. That's, that is quite interesting. So, you're, you're heading to Macarin to find out more about this? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Awesome. You know, yeah. Macarin is con- it's not necessarily on the way back to Ilton, but... It's close enough, if you guys wouldn't mind some company. I'm all the way out here. Why, of course, tag along. Oh, great. Cool. Rice down, rice down town name. Rice, rice down town name. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the map. <laughs> but we didn't know that that was significant. Yeah, that's true. I want to walk over to Kieran real fast. If he's still, like, horse. He's, he's petting this horse so gently. Um, wishing that he could be on the horse. <laughs> he wishes to know this horse feels and its thoughts. Her name's Buttermint, by the way. Hello, Buttermint. It is wonderful to meet you. My name is Kieran. <laughs> very pretty. <laughs> I think the horse is very friendly. Like, like she, you said she? She's, like, nuzzling you? Gasps just audibly. Having a delightful time. He's lovely. Care for her. Buttermint is getting distracted and like grazing and starting to wander away. I'm following Buttermilk. Sorry, guys. Um, <laughs> if Buttermilk, Buttermint leaves, I'm going with Buttermint. <laughs> <laughs> I think Juniper's like, were y'all were y'all planning on going on foot? We didn't really have any other plans. I suppose haven't much had the coin for anything else. So yeah, I mean, I don't exactly have the money for an- another horse or two. But, uh, you know, we I can just walk, Buttermint. We were kind of hustling on the way here anyway, so the, the pacing's okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Nah, yeah, that's nah. That's my bad. I'd... I'm just glad you're all right. <laughs> oh, this is so <laughs> should've, gay. <laughs> Should have been a little more specific, <laughs> but there's not much way to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of... Very true. And, and, and SOS, sorry. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe we need to to you know get our get a, a better system or something. Get a better. I mean, maybe I, it did work. You are here now, so yeah, it did work. That is correct. 
It did work. I feel like at this point, you guys will probably have noticed. I don't think I've ever I've told the rest of the party. Rowan's got a little tattoo on her wrist of like a flower. I think I've mentioned that before. I think it was mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a magic tattoo. Uh, really? Jennifer has one. Wow. Really. <laughs> So when you t- I don't- <laughs> Sorry, that was so wow. mean. Sorry. That was, that that was the so most aggressive thing you've that ever That was said. so aggressive. Yeah. Sorry. That's like more aggressive than the time I went, who's who's back? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean- Jesus. <laughs> I can't remember. I basically I can't remember if I've told the rest of the rest of you this. It's it's they've got a little yeah. Is they've got a little message between? I'm pretty sure you have. I think you described that. Come on, you specifically point out that Rowan didn't touch it, and then and then I retconned it that we, she had. <laughs> you retconned it that she had. Yeah. Yeah. So Juniper's got a got a matching one, and it serves as a little. Well, you just mentioned earlier that she made an effort not to touch it usually. Yeah. And then we discussed that you had touched it during the fight. Yes. Yep. When yep. Yep. Things were bad. Yeah. So idea is magic tattoo. It's an SOS signal between girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it's like the bond touch bracelets. Where yeah. it just like lights up and vibrates or something <laughs> on the other end. I don't the know. Wrist buzzes. Yeah, wrist <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's the other option here? Yeah. It just like warms up. I honestly wouldn't mind like the light up thing. Like it lights up a little bit. Yeah, that's fun. It's a little glowy. And then you're like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> My girlfriend's in trouble across the continent. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta run. Buttermints, <laughs> quick. <laughs> So it's about a day and a half-ish journey to the main city of Macarin. Ilton is, like, directly south of Macarin by a couple hours' travel. So Juniper <laughs> Juniper would just chag along with y'all and then see what happens. Because she'd be close to home by then. So I assume that well, even though... Definitely Rowan, if and possibly Kieran at least once or twice have visited Macarin, that Dan would be the one in charge of which direction to go, just because he lives there. Yeah. yeah. But feel free to fight the power on that one. Oh, yeah. I would not fight the power. You know where you're going. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dan, which way are we going? Uh... Have we entered, like, the... Have we entered Macarin, like, we're here, or are we just, like, on the outskirts? That's a good question. Once we kind of leave Roxham, at least looking at the map, it's kind of, we leave Roxham. There's pretty much a direct path from Roxham to the main kingdom, because Roxham is a big village that has traveled. Um, The main road, there is a main road that will take you directly from one to the other. Hmm. I think we get to maybe the point where the road, like, would fork, and... We just keep going straight ahead, and Dan just doesn't say Dan doesn't say anything. Dan's just mouth mouth shut, still walking straight ahead. I feel like the rest of us. I don't want to speak for everybody, but I feel like we're all just kind of following. Is this a sort of like he's confident, he knows where he's going, so you just silently agree? Like you know, when like you're in a shopping mall with a group of friends, and like one person starts walking, and the rest of you are like, "Oh, okay, I guess we're going that way." I feel like <laughs> I I should clarify. I feel like Dan has been like fairly talkative and chatty and just like usual self up until this point and then like down down road suddenly a dead pad not talking to anyone i feel like as as we're traveling juniper's also been trying to like start conversations with the new people yeah she's like yeah you know so uh, kieran t- tell me about yourself do you have a lot of experience with animals uh Sometimes. the buttermint seems to like you a lot and I think I think Karen, Karen's been spending most of this time like hanging out near Buttermint, which means in turn hanging out near the gays. <laughs> because he's just <laughs> best friend. She she would after a while of you hovering there, if she's like on horseback, um, just kind of walking at pace with you guys, she's gonna be like offer her hand down, and be like, oh. You want you want ride? Oh. Ah. Your <laughs> I think he like deer, deer in headlights for a moment and then like nods vigorously. And I think to answer the question, he'll be like, sometimes. I would spend a lot of time in, in the stables in the barn. You know, if you spend enough time overnight with the horses, they are they become your friends. I do know. I do know. Horses are very loyal creatures. Mm. Hay is sometimes comfy place to sleep. Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose. 
<laughs> and I'm having a I'm having a mystical time on top of this. <laughs> Kieran is thriving. I'm delighted. Kieran is so small on this huge horse. Do, how tall is Juniper? Beck. Um, I imagine tall. Oh yeah, (laughs) tall, taller than Rowan. I think. I think you said six foot in the last. I think I did say six foot. Oh yes, she's tall. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> it was just um, the quiet, oh yeah. <laughs> I love her. I like her a lot. Leave listen, me alone. Listen, it's what she deserves. It's what I deserve, personally. Yeah. I, want say, I want a tall girlfriend. <laughs> what were we talking about? I feel like it's no, because Kieran is so much smaller horses. than Juniper, she like puts him in front of her on the saddle. This is wonderful. <laughs> picks him up by the scruff of the neck and just lifts onto the horse. <laughs> By the end of his cloak. <laughs> <laughs> I love it here. This is great. Just grab him. By the end of this session, I feel like Kieran's gonna get accidentally adopted by these. <laughs> these are his parental units. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have small encounter list. If anyone would like to roll Fuck it up. Fuck it up. <laughs> Can I roll it? Can I roll it? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I dropped the dice. <laughs> Two. Two? Okay. Oh, hell yeah. Two. Okay. Another goddamn wishing well. <laughs> so, as you guys are traveling, Viewin is not super wooded. It's mostly farmland as you guys got to the edges, but there are a fair amount of trees. Uh, you see a lot of pine trees, oak trees like that. But as you get further into Macarin, it gets more and more dry, it gets warmer, and it gets much more flat. There are rock formations about, but past that, um it's it's very flat dry area so there just isn't a whole lot of scenery as you guys are traveling for a little while but after a while just off of the main road that you were traveling on there is a entrance to a mine shaft what looks like it was once a well-traveled mine shaft the entrance had looks like it had at one point had like a board lazily tapped across it but it has been pulled down, and it, there is a entrance to the mine. If you you can see in, it starts off pretty like it doesn't go down immediately. It's a kind of a um what's the word I'm looking for? The opposite of steep. Gradual. Gradual. Yeah, gradual <laughs> incline. Gradual. It's just kind of a gradual decline down into it, and you can see pretty far into it, and there looks to be some abandoned mining gear inside. Mm. You guys want to play Minecraft? <laughs> I love Minecraft. <laughs> Let's go, guys. I want some diamonds. I always feel bad when I hit you with an encounter of a thing you pass, and I'm like, please go look at it. <laughs> like, you don't have to, technically, but... You're jumping off the horse, and I'm running. Oh my god, he, like, hops yeah. off the horse. Yeah, I, I got mad hops, so I'm hopping off his horse, and I'm scurrying towards this <laughs> mine shaft. Like, we do, a, we do like, a, a stop, maybe, to be like, huh, that looks like a thing, Kieran's like, I wish to go to the there, and then jumps, um, and, like... F- <laughs> pounces over there and starts starts poking in uh, kate kate what are you kate what are you doing there's things in here kieran I, please be careful with that i think that is like dropping bags and the mines are not exactly stable kate. around here oh, no. yeah there's no stables it's his mines no horses there's... okay yeah that's very funny the <laughs> be silly then you were so quick with that oh my god <laughs> what what are you I feel like if Kira's going into the mine, Dan's gonna follow because he knows that the mines around here are long and twisting and c- can collapse. <laughs> are we go? Okay, we're going to mine. Oh god, damn it! She's, she's gonna fall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like Juniper's like, oh, oh, y'all. Okay, y'all do this. Y'all do this often. Pit stops. No, uh, <laughs> y'all no. live like this. <laughs> Some, sometimes, uh, sometimes K K gets it into. His little brain. They have a very strong I want to go there response. <laughs> and we have yet to hold them back. <laughs> you, you know? Yes, it's the I've I've been calling it the I want to go to there um uh, response. I I, I mm-hmm. fear I've never seen anything quite like it, honestly. It's it's an accurate it's an accurate description. You know? It's a drive to keep I admire... moving forward. That, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I admire that sense of adventure. I know, I'm, right? I'm here for this. And she'll, like, tie buttermint outside of the mine. 
up to two people can roll me a perception check me, me. as you all head down into this mine. Me, me. Well, don't give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> May I perceive since I'm running up? Me and I would me, like me. to perceive. Yes, I yes. Her, Sorry, I, I, I and Neff. We could do like first in and last in, like front and back. Who's keeping watch? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my new fancy cantrip dice just rolled a 15. Huh? Ooh. Hold on, 15's not my... What's my modifier? Hold on. 22. Okay. Yes, yeah, six, sorry, 16. And what, the other one was... 22. Okay, yeah. So as you guys get deeper into the cave, you can see, like, a ways ahead, there is, like, a collapse. So you can't go too deep into the cave. But there is an abandoned minecart a ways in. And Kieran, when you, like, peek into the minecart, there is some, some, various, some various rocks, like a pickaxe discarded, but you see a, a tiny, like, you almost don't see it. I think you're pulling away and being like, ah, rocks, lame. Mm-hmm. And it just catches your eye. There's a tiny orange glint in the bottom <laughs> of this minecart. Well, 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 Oh, I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm breaching in. I want the shiny. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it is, like, when I, I, when I say tiny, I'm, like, like, a pebble. But it is, mm-hmm. it looks like, almost like a broken kind of twig, tiny little pebble. Where it has, like, mm-hmm. jagged edges that look broken in a way that, like, rocks typically aren't. But it is, like, a bright orange ambery kind of color mm-hmm. just to get a, a sense little piece of rock. just to get a sense big uh slightly bigger or slightly smaller than like a d20 because that's about the size i'm thinking i i would say slightly smaller okay vibes and uh, neff as you are in the back we kind of like reach the end of this little mine shaft kieran's digging around in a mine cart uh you glance around and something in in the dirt also catches your eye and when you pick it up, it is a nice, like, uncut piece of crystal. Ooh. You can assume it would be worth some amount of money when appraised. I'm gonna pocket And when it's, like, that. cut and cleaned. Yeah. Cool. Pocketing it. Put some <laughs> funky orange gem in my pocket. <laughs> Kieran is like, Kieran, like, grabs that and is like, not, and then, like, walks back out. Like, that is, that's, he's, he's good. <laughs> you got his little shiny he's souvenir. Like done. It's like, I get it. <laughs> you know, Kate, you have the most uncanny ability to find shiny things I have ever seen. It's quite I'm impressive, like, yeah. You, like, sense, you yeah. sense that from, like, out on the road, that there was something in here. How did you do <laughs> that? something shiny in here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I wanted to go. I, want, I just wanted to go into the there. Fair enough, I guess. Hell yeah. Mm, an orange shiny rock. It is... All in all, uh, like, about a day and a half travel. And I feel like as it is getting dark, you reach the next big thing. Oh. oh no. I didn't realize we'd have to stay the night. Okay. We, we, yeah. um, mm. As the sun is beginning to set, you come across... At first, you think that there's, like, a village uh, approaching... But as you get closer, you realize it's maybe, like, one or two houses that are still in some sort of completeness. And the rest of the village is sort of, is more of a ruin. There are some beams standing in buildings, some stone brick pieces that have remained standing. But most of it is just charred remains. The few structures that are burned but are still in some sort of order have like rope around them um like little posts and are roped off and there are some like plaques scattered around this village that have little blurbs of information on them i want to read them all right dan's not Mm -hmm. stopping for y'all to read dan's gonna keep walking if you stop to read things so there there are various signs most of them on houses that have a little bit like just enough left to be able to tell that they were a home there are plaques that have names and information about people on them just generally like it would be like the home of marianne and it says she was this old she had this kid she did this in her free time and a lot of the buildings just have blurbs about people in front of them there the biggest plaque in the place is at a house that 
the only house that's roped off that is almost completely gone, it has a bigger plaque in front of it, and it says... Oh, no. Oh, God. Former home of Daniel Thorns. Yeah, I saw that coming. <laughs> and it has... <laughs> First off, in kind of in italics, it has in quotes the lyrics of the Ballad of Daniel Thorns mm. written underneath the title, and then has a little bit of information about the only survivor of the tragedy that occurred in the village of Penjar. Okay, if Dan has not stopped walking, can I run up to meet him and kind of like stand in front of him? Hey. Hey. Okay, I'm not about to ask you if you're okay, because that feels like a stupid question. A little bit, yeah. But what... Did you know this was on the path? Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew. Um, going around it would have added several more days to the trip, and... Um... All right, all right. We don't have to stay here, you know. We could go through the net if we need... I don't know if that's... Smart. I figured we could find somewhere on the outskirts. This may be. Dan, I am not going to force you to stay at a home you don't want to be at. I think the issue is staying at a home I would very much like to be at. Oh, oh what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, he's just going to sort of shift the bag on his shoulder and be like, I, I don't, I don't want to force you all to keep going through the night. We've been walking all day already. It's, um, it's fine. Are you sure? She means that, by the way. That is uh, completely genuine. Are you sure? I don't think there's tears in Dan's eyes, but they're like, he's on the verge of welling up, and he's just like, it's, um, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. It's fine. We can, it's, it's been a decade. It's, it's fine. All right. I'd, uh, we're here for you, you know that, right? Thank you. Th thanks. I, I I appreciate it. Oh. Okay. Um, I think throughout, I don't know how far away from the, um, the wreckage of the Thorns household, those two were having that conversation, but I think during that, I think once Neff, like, caught sight of the larger plaque i think he kind of stand there and read it for a little bit and then eventually kind of crouch down and sit by it for a little bit like you know like he he'd kind of like crouch on the walls of his feet and like read it a few couple times over and then just kind of stare at it for a little bit he'd stay there for a little bit then he'd get up and leave but i think he'd be there for a little bit probably while that conversation was happening mm. yeah ne neff's gonna now run up and be like I, we could have, we could have taken a, another route. It wouldn't be, I don't care if it, are you, are you sure about this? I don't think we would have had the resources to take a different route. The landscape here isn't exactly the most easily traversable. The nearest trade route would have taken its days out of the way. It's, it's, it's okay. I, All right. I promise. And he does not sound sure when he says he promises, but he says it. Mm. If you want to promise, then I'll believe you, but I, I suppose we should set up camp then. Sorry, I'm going to wait for the birds to stop fighting. <laughs> <laughs> <That sounds nice. laughs> A lot of birds outside my window right now. The birds have opinions. Welcome, welcome to Cancer. We are not quite capable of getting through like one line of dialogue without a giggle or birds. Or dogs. <laughs> birds. Man, listen. Or, or dogs. dogs. We Jamie will edit it to make it sound really nice and dramatic. <laughs> hey, uh, editing Connor here, because I did this episode, actually. Uh, f*** you, me. Why did you do that to me? <laughs> because there is somewhat, this is somewhat of a tourist destination. Not a big one, more of like a roadside attraction level kind of tourist attraction. Um, there would be like a couple newly, not newly, but n not... Uh, the time that the village was constructed since then have been buildings built that's like a restaurant a inn just because they know that this is a typical place that people would stop on journeys so there are there is that or you guys can 
pitch camp where you guys can keep going. Up to y'all. Do we want bed or do we want campfire? <laughs> I feel like I feel like if we were to like st like once again kind of let Dan lead if he goes to the inn I'd follow she would follow him to the inn if she goes further away to make camp she'd be like okay this is what we're doing mm -hmm. I think this is I think Neff's on I Netflix, think this yeah. is a Dan driven decision <laughs> I kind of want to go to the inn just to see like what's there because I don't think that Dan has been here mm. since oh. mm. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's it's a very typical in. I think there are some like newspaper clippings on the wall and like things relating to the tragedy and like stories about it. But otherwise, it is just a typical in. There's a bartender slash innkeeper waiting to greet you guys that can show you up to a room or two. I feel like Juniper's yeah. very awkward about this. Oh. Like. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I feel like they're all. Yeah, I feel yeah, like they're yeah. all a little bit awkward about this. You know, like how do you, what do you do? I ask yeah, <laughs> I ask her questions about her horse. <laughs> Kira's talking her ear off about the horse. I ask her a lot of questions about her horse. <laughs> like I ask about how long she's had, how long she's had buttermint, what kind of what kind of saddles buttermint wear. Has Butterman ever done really cool jump? Is Butterman like dandelions? Some horses like <laughs> is Butterman an apple horse? Some of them aren't apple horses, Butterman oddly enough. Hey Jamie. Mad hops. In in the yeah. <laughs> Butterman have mad hops. <laughs> in the recap that I gave mm -hmm. to Juniper, does do you think would uh, I'm trying to think what I have told does she know that Kieran is a member of the royal family, technically? That's a good question. Aaron didn't say that your question, so that's mm. up to you, Boogie. You update your partner. <laughs> would Rowan have told her that? You know, actually, I don't think she. I feel like she would have thought that's Kieran's secret to give out. Actually, mm, cool. just, so yeah, she she would not know that. Cool, good to good <laughs> to know. Yeah, I feel like she's like she's answering all your questions eagerly. She's like, ah, oh, you know, but Butterman's the kind of horse that he eat anything you put in front of him. Uh, yeah, this saddle. Well, my my mama was teaching me how to how to make them. <gasps> I can't remember any of the things that we came up with for for Juniper. This exact. You know what? I can't whatever you say, written. whatever you say is canon. Cool. <laughs> Go for that's it. Where, that's where I thought we were at. So yep. I'm, she's like, oh, you know, uh, my mama's gotten real good at, at at making her own her own saddles and her own uh tack and things, and she's been teaching oh. me how to do it. I'm still I'm still getting better, but you know. Yeah. We'll go off on a tangent about that for a little bit. Oh, hell yeah. She's a whiz with leather. You should see the yeah. saddles. The yeah, saddles Rowan. she meant. Yeah. 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 Shut up. That was a sentence. I was you thinking just about said. saddles. <laughs> God, why does this keep happening where I say something that in context is perfectly normal and you all go, that yeah. You keep leaving yeah. character. No. That was making that a canon interaction. Yeah. That was. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Beck, how could you not think of the other context I for that sentence that you saddles. just said? I was letting that be a canon interaction. I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> No, that could be canon. That's fine. <laughs> For it, it yes, ending me. It, <laughs> Just lost character. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> not to not to start the the same conversation as last time that took us like 20 minutes. How are we? Bling Same as last time. Same as last time. Except this time. Kieran is just, I don't know, we Kieran's just <laughs> also there. Kieran's <laughs> Rowan and Juniper. Yeah, those two no, on the no. bed. Kieran's been a nest on the floor. It's oh how it God. works. There can, no, I feel like there, okay. there was two beds in the room before. Yeah. There can still be two beds. That It's just Rowan and, and oh, Juniper have one. <laughs> Third wheel in. Third wheel with Kieran. I think it's fine. <laughs> I think I think Kira like awkwardly almost they go like into the room and Kieran pushes Kira in. like like is like going to go into the room of Rowan because that's where he's used to and since the beginning they have always shared the room. Um <laughs> and then he sees Juniper and then stops in the middle of the hallway and like looks at Neff and Dan and then considers that room and then looks at like, Juniper and, and Rowan and nods and goes into that room. I like room. the idea that between the actual two people that are dating <laughs> and Dan and Nev, Kieran goes, yeah. this is an easier room to be in. Well, 
Also, Dan and Neff aren't sharing a bed, so there's not true, a yeah. there would there, not be there, a spare mm-hmm. bed in that room yeah. for Kira. Yeah, if it Kira was would have to share his bed, but sure. also the energy in the studio My between dad. them isn't necessarily homies yet. My so dad. Kieran doesn't want Kieran doesn't want to be part of that pining. Okay, oh. this was an already established relationship between two people. One of them has a cool horse, and the other one's Rowan. So yes, oh. let him in the room. <laughs> I feel like Juniper has so many questions about this group of friends that yeah. once yeah, I go to like bed separated. and I like yeah. I curl up in my little bed and there's just a weird dragon that's like <laughs> that Kieran rolls is, up. Once Kieran is in bed, Juniper just like turns to Rowan and is like, "I have so many questions." Ask away. Ask. Away. I don't know if I'll have many answers, but <laughs> I you can you can try ask it sometimes. Sometimes a coronation goes wrong and you end up in a bakery with three people who are from very different backgrounds and you just kind of go with it. Karen is asleep, mind you, when you guys are talking about this, right. but I think Tortellini is just like staring death at the <laughs> <laughs> And I, I don't know mm-hmm. if it's offensive or not, but like just peeks over his body and this weird dragon does like a frog blade. That is horrifying. <laughs> oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah. I just wanted to put that in there while you guys oh, are talking. Oh, thank Continue. you for that. Oh, <laughs> Tortellini. I've been thinking about it. We, we established, like, Art did the references for Tortellini and it's like a yeah. cute little like cartoon dragon animal. Mm-hmm. But like in real life, that's a probably a slightly off-putting little creature. Like <laughs> he's a, a pseudo dragon. He's a baby. He's, he's a, a very dragon. tiny he's, dragon. Yeah, he, he's a reptile. <laughs> I love that. Him. We also like met last episode. So mm-hmm. yeah, we don't know. Listen, no bonds got have it from been a made weird with this dream. dragon. And also, also got it from a weird dream where he made a pact. Where he made so, a like, pact that he wasn't entirely like. Yeah, he like signed a contract with a producer he didn't really know. To... So yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, continue back. You guys are talking. Uh, oh, I think Juniper's like, is is that the Dan Thorns? <laughs> yeah. Uh, D- yeah. So you know, coming oh. here is heavy. For a number of reasons. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Wow, that I, I, I just wanted to make sure that's that. Wow. Okay. Um. Hey, I attract crazy people. You've told me that before. That you know, it worked on me, so mm-hmm. I can't complain. Mm-hmm. Sure did. And Neff has been disguised as a half orc this entire time, right? Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank okay. You. So she's like, is. Is uh, Neff also from Macarin? I don't really know where Neff is from. Okay. To be honest. Interesting. Neff, there's there's some stuff about Neff that's not really my place to say. That's the other thing. I've I've learned some stuff about these people, and I love you, and I'll tell you everything. But some things are are not mine to tell. That's completely understandable. So, but I I don't I honestly don't know where Neff is from. I don't think he's told me. I know he's got like mm-hmm. I know he's got like a cool orc family. So it's cool. uh, just so you know, if authorities ask oh, I pardon? If authorities ask, Dan is my cousin. Gotcha. hmm Okay, good. Perfect. Glad we're on no the No questions same page. asked on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, we we may have um prison break a little bit. All right. Sick. Cool. A little bit. Yep. Mhm. Mhm. It was a good one. If we did well, it wasn't a good we didn't break out of anything. We kind of paid our way out of that Not. one. So yeah, the the loser way I know, but yeah, but we, well, you, you got to do what you got to do. It still counts. Yeah, it still counts. Yeah, Kieran Kieran was very nervous about doing it the old-fashioned way. Here? So I didn't want to stress How him did out. wait? Hold, you bought How did you afford to Never mind. I feel like that's a question that I, I that's not that's a rude question to ask. Never mind. Karen, Karen's got a cool bag holding. Don't take it. Okay. Don't take it. Look I, at me. Why? I, I, I won't. I won't. Tortellini just like makes it. <laughs> I won't. I won't. You can't take it. Not that one. They're your this friends. Mm. I got. I got a question. Well, one last question. Then, 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 then okay. rest. Do they know? Do they know you? Do they know all about you? No. All and right. I'd like to keep it that way. If of course. Possible. Of course. That's why I asked. Mm-hmm. Do you think we're gonna be able to sleep with that thing staring at us the whole night? Because I'm, 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 I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I don't know about you. I'm, I'm 
real tired. I think I, I think I can handle it, but it might, it might be a little difficult. You know, slept in a lot of weird places. Never had a pseudo dragon staring at me. Yeah, that's the first. That's the first. Yeah, learn, try something new every day. You know. Yeah, it'll that's be, fun. it'll be a fun challenge. <laughs> and anyway. <laughs> I don't know if I go straight to challenge. <laughs> I think Tortellini starts eating something. He probably shouldn't. Like, you just watch him pretty soon. He's chewing on like, Kieran's hair. <laughs> yeah, he's just taking a good nibble out of Kieran's hair. And he's probably eating a button. And you don't know where he's <laughs> coming from. And you're kind of concerned if that's all right. But he does it all while staring at you. Jack's own outfit. There's a button missing. How? Uh, yeah, it's your button. You don't remember when it was gone. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> She's like, oh, well. Um. Uh, anyway. Anyway, good night, love. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you for coming to get me. Of course. Love you. I love you too. I think that's it, yeah? Yeah. That's it. Okay. As I'm trying to sleep while being <laughs> stared at by, by a pseudo <laughs> dragon eating a button. <laughs> Normal. Normal Art. activities. I do have Art. I do have bedtime to do list uh, as per usual. I'll start with I'll start with Van again. Yay. <laughs> I will say, like, I think Neff's probably been pretty quiet all night he's gonna go sleep pretty quiet mm-hmm. too hopefully we'll see how that fucking goes okay put me in coach <laughs> <laughs> all right you know the drill by now this time yeah. you are in the kitchen mm. big ass kitchen you a lot of the like I, this is just i just like describing estelira and things whereas yeah, normally like kitchens are pretty like white and sterile kind of vibe this kitchen is very like dark it's got like reds and purples a lot of the metals are like brass and accents and things on all of the pots and pans um instead of like silver that you would see and view in and things like that the places that i'm going to give you to hide cut to the chase i don't need to do the the stupid uh little kid voice every single time <laughs> we're getting into the group of this <laughs> no one likes that. You know, nobody voice. wants to hear that asshole um <laughs> Yeah. The places that you can hide, there is a large, like, meat freezer that you could hide inside of. There is a large enough cabinet underneath the sink that you could climb into. There's a pantry you could hide in the corner of. And then there is, like, a tray, like a, like a cart that would be used to move things out, dishes out of the kitchen, that you could, mm-hmm. like, climb into the bottom of the tray under the cloth, like ratatouille. Ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> Such a way to describe it. Um, I think Neff's gonna pick the the spot under the sink. See how that goes. Oh, under the sink. All right. Yeah. You hear Prince Zandon start to walk around the kitchen. Even though the you you've been the last couple of dreams you would have heard him like walking around on carpet or on hardwood floor or the tile echoes a little more you can it's harder to pick out where exactly he is through the cabinet doors and with the echoing on the tile around the kitchen um he doesn't seem to be taunting as much this time maybe his loss in your last dream got him a little bit but after Mm. a while of trying to locate him uh your eyes have just started to adjust to the darkness as you look around at the various like cleaning products and things underneath the sink And then suddenly you are thrown into light as Prince Sandin yanks open the cabinet. The light floods into the cabinet and you go almost instinctively to shut your eyes to block it out. And you realize your eyes are already closed. And then you open your eyes and you are awake in the middle of the night. And this time, instead of a pain down your chest in between your ribs, there is a pain running down your wrists. I think Neff. Might make some noise. Might make some noise? Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to be, like, pain. hmm I think it's earlier it's in the noise. night this time than you would have noticed previously. Like, instead of it being the middle of the night, you might have just been asleep for about an hour or so. Yeah. I think as soon as Neff's brain kind of registers the pain, he's going to, like, grunt and, and shout a tiny bit in anger and then, like, pull his, in... like, sleeves back to try and work out what is happening enough that it would wake up dan <laughs> probably okay Anna, come here please so dan is laying awake in bed not even managing to fall asleep on his own yet and it's been maybe an hour or two since neff managed to fall asleep when suddenly 
out of the blue, Neff sits bolt upright in bed and cries out. Oh. Um, you're going to kind of watch him, like, get a curl in a little bit and then scramble to pull up his sleeves. He's very clumsy about how he does it. He's not as reserved as he usually is. I don't think he's even going to notice that Dan is awake. But I think there's going to be, a, like, a solid, like, 10 seconds, I reckon, in which Neff is vocally in pain. That he's going to, like, do his best to kind of shut up, if for lack of a better term. And mm. I, I think after that, he's getting, he's, how long does it take for the actual pain to subside? It's just a couple seconds where it is, like, legitimate pain. And then after that, you can, you can feel that there is something there if it is not consistent pain at mm. that point. But it doesn't, it's not actively hurting after a couple seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think once the pain has subsided, Neff's going to be like, oh, damn it, can't I have done one night? And, and mm. kind of run, run a hand through his hair and, and then, like, kind of uh, fumble for any kind of... I presume if it's a tavern, uh, have we got, like, oil lamps or anything like that? How dark is the room right now? I mean, I feel like it would be pitch dark right now, but you could probably light a lamp. I feel like if Neff is suddenly yelling out in pain, Dan is probably, like, jumped up to start lighting lamps and check on him Aww. while the pain is happening. <laughs> Okay. He's fully awake. Dan has not slept. Yeah. He's just sitting on the bed. All right. I think Neff's going to fumble for his oil lamp, but if, like, he sees one being lit, he'll, like, kind of pause what he's doing. What? Hey, are, you, are you okay? What? Do... Oh, um, um, <laughs> that's, that's a great question. Neff kind of looks a little bit frazzled and shaken, but he's, he's, he's going to go, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Um. Just, uh, uh, nightmares, <laughs> you know? Just nightmares. Um, I'll, um, c could, could you bring the light a little bit closer? Um, sure. I need to check something. Yeah, maybe step over and, like, hold out the lamp. I think Nev's gonna kind of, like, throw one leg out of the bed and, like, lean out to try and see what's on his wrist, but he's not gonna be able to read it. I presume it looks the same as the chest. Yep, almost exactly the same as the line of runes that go down your chest, but, like, one half of it is down one wrist, and the other half of it is down the other wrist. Oh, oh, that's delightful. Oh, just what I wanted to hear. I'm, um, I'm so sorry if to... Did I wake you? I, uh, I don't... No, no, it's, it's fine. If Dan is, like, over there and his hand with the lantern and can, like, see the markings on Neff's wrist, can he, like, reach out and, like, take... Neff's wrist, or try to, to like look at the runes. Yeah, I don't. Neff might freeze up for a second, but I don't think he's gonna resist. Okay, he just, he just kind of gently takes Neff's wrist and kind of looks up his arm at the line of runes. I'm assuming Dan doesn't know anything about it. Like, he's, I don't think he's gonna like. Nah. Nah. <laughs> um, did he try? I know as a player, this isn't gonna do anything. Hmm. But Dan doesn't know. Can Dan try lay on hands on the room? <laughs> yes. Um, Go for it. I think maybe just one. One lay on hands? One lay on hands. So just one one just point one. of healing? Yeah. Sp but like you're specifically trying to heal the the, the runes. The runes, yeah. I, I think okay. he kind of just like rests a hand over the runes on Neff's wrist maybe. And like has a little glowing magic flames kind of okay. run across his hand and then around Neff's wrist. Then roll me a constitution saving throw. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> That's an eight. Yeah, you take one point of psychic damage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dan immediately, like, pulls hands away, like, I'm I'm imagining I'm imagining that he was like either like sitting on the bed beside Neff or like standing there and he is like he's backed away. I, I did not mean I am so sorry. I No, no, it's it's fine. It's 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 fine. Neff is Neff is not fine, but he's he doesn't want Dan to leave the personal space bubble. So he's a little bit upset about that one. It's it's to, it's totally fine. <laughs> Maybe like these magic. I don't think you can Heal them, like you, like you, you, you could heal something else. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. 
I'm, I'm sorry. I just thought it. Um, I guess I'm used to you know a, th- a thing hurts just kind of healing it away. Yeah. No. I. Um, yeah. I understand that. I. I suppose I'm the same. It's just these. This seems to be something that just won't go away. It's um every night since since we left Viewen, um I I've been having I suppose they're dreams of some kind, but I don't think they're completely dreams in which I play a game and if I lose I end up with a new set of runes. If I win I'm fine. But it's been it's every night. I don't think this is something that you can just fix with magic. I'm I'm sorry. I um, I don't want to carry this alone. Uh, th- thank thank you for trying. I suppose. I'm sorry. My trying only caused more pain. You don't you don't need to carry it alone. I I'm here if you need anything. Thank you. Um, I perhaps I I should try to sleep. You, usually I can only have one nightmare a night. So I suppose this I've hit my quota and I can sleep now safely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Dan just nods. It's, yeah, it's um. Hopefully, that's how it works. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. Uh, I f- have. Have you slept? Yeah. Yeah. I. I slept. It's. Yeah. I got some sleep. Okay. Okay. Um. You just seem tired. I wanted to check. Very obvious lie. I was gonna say a very obvious lie. <laughs> Has not slept. Hey, listen, Neff's the one no with sleep eye perception. For Dan. Neff's the one with eye perception. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just doing what the character chooses. Does he need to roll insight, or is it that obvious that Dan not slept? I think it's that slept? obvious. I think. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Neff's gonna point out the lie, but I definitely think Neff's not believing the lie. <laughs> Neff's gonna kind of lean back into bed and lie back down, and and from his his place there he's kind of gonna go just wake me if you need anything please yeah i'm I'm so sorry for all of this no you don't you're gonna do apologize i'll i'll let you know if there's anything promise yeah yeah i, I promise okay you better stick to it good night good night Neff. and i think he's gonna roll over i think dan dan will go back to sitting on the bed sitting on his bed mm-hmm. just drop it against the wall for a bit Oh no, I grab how gay them. people, yeah. they're broken and it's not their people. fault this time. Hello. It's not their fault, they're just sad. <laughs> they're actually they're actually trying their best to be yeah. gay this time. <laughs> okay, Connor, would you like to, because I already railroaded your plans the tiniest little bit with Ven's plans, um, would you like to roll a stealth check to get out or not? It's up to you. <gasps> yes, because I think it's fun. <laughs> If it w- if someone else would talk about it. <laughs> okay, roll a stealth check, and what is your passive... Per- I'll just say it here so that everyone gets a chance. Everyone else can roll perception, but disadvantage with the people who are through another door. But Neff can roll regularly. Nice. So not passive perceptions, actively roll. Not passive perception, actively rolling, just so that there's the disadvantage difference. God! Damn it! I rolled a nineteen for to start, and then I rolled a three. Oh, Uh, that's an eighteen. God damn! (laughs) I can't see anything. (laughs) No. Oh my god. Okay. Listen, you're (laughs) cuddled up all cozy with your six foot tall. Am I cuddled up all cozy with my girlfriend, or are we both so focused on the nerve-wrecking existence that is Tortellini that we are not? You're turned away from the door. (laughs) You're turned away from the door in fear. Cuddled up, but it's in the sense of burying face in chest so that you don't have to look at Tortellini. (laughs) You're just eyes glow in the dark. (laughs) Oh Christ. I like how the first session oh God. Of we're like, this oh guy's God. So, so cute and little. So cute. And now we're like, what if he's okay. an eldritch horror? <laughs> <laughs> so, Neff, a little bit after you've managed to fall back asleep, you hear just like a floorboard creak okay. as Dan walks out of the room. And Kieran, additionally, you probably hear like the door across the hall open mm. and shut. Kieran, I think we'll, we'll peek out, crawl out of bed, and like. It's like you go to peek through the door, like you open your door and you peek out of it, but he's like down low. So he's like mm-hmm. crouched down on like low on the ground <laughs> and then peeking out the door and seeing what's going on. 
So, Dan, you're in the hallway, and you see Kieran creepily crouched on the floor, mm-hmm. peeking out the door. <laughs> Every, everything's fine. Kieran, you can, you can go back to bed if you want to. Is that a lie? Yeah, a little, little bit. I mean, there's no, there's no threat. Everything is... You guys are fine. You're not? I'll be fine in the morning. No, you won't. <sighs> Damn. Yeah. Do you want company? Or want alone? I I don't really know if I mind either way. And I think Karen will, will like reach back in the room and like grab cloak and and put tortellini inside of in, inside of the cloak, head peeking out, and says, I can take what tortellini for fresh air for a little bit. Yeah. If you want to, sure. Yeah. And we'll follow uh him out wherever you're going. <laughs> Neff, I feel like you would have heard that conversation if you would have liked to. It's up yeah, to you. Yeah, I think Neff heard the conversation. He's, he's trying not to take it too personally. Um, but he's like kind of upset that Ian's not sleeping, but he's also mm. tired. So I think he's gonna let it cool. go. Mm-hmm. So Dan, I guess with Kira now, just sort of quietly leaves the tavern and without really saying anything, we'll walk back to the house with the plaque that used to be his house and his family's house. And I think he just kind of walks through the night and he maybe gets there and just sits down in the grass opposite the little plaque at the doorway. And just there for a bit. I think he maybe just takes a little candle out of his pack and lights it and sets it just in front of the plaque for a little bit. I think Kieran will, will send Tortellini off on a little mission. And, like, after a while, like, Kieran, Kieran hangs back, letting Dan do this thing. And once Tortellini returns, it's with a mouthful of just random wildflowers. And Kieran kind of walks around at the different plaques, leaving flowers at them. Before finally getting over to Dan and doing, like, a little a little crouch sat a little ways behind. And passing a, a, a single dandelion to Dan. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. I am. Um, thanks. Mm. You're welcome. And I think Dan just reaches over and does the thing where he like puts out the candle with his fingertips, and then rests the dandelion in front of it. He's going, uh, you can, you can head back anytime. You don't need to wait out here if you don't want to. Are you staying the night here? Maybe. Yeah. Just. For a little bit, I think. I think Karen will, like, after you put the dandelion down, walk closer to, like, the actual plaque. Maybe, like, tilt his head at it, looking between it and Dan, before, like, doing sort of the thing he did with Aurelius of, like, putting his forehead to it for, like, just, like, a second. Closed eyes. And then, like, step back with a nod afterwards. And then does the same thing to Dan, where he's crouched on the ground. Of like forehead to forehead. Then will just lean back into his forehead. And mm-hmm. I think is maybe sniffling and crying a little bit. I think if you start crying, then Karen will like sit down in front of you, arms open as an invitation for like full on hug. But only if you lean into it. I think that normally he would try and stay more stoic about it. But I think that here and now Dan is going to lean into the hug and just mm-hmm. maybe cry into Kieran's shoulder quietly. Mm. I think it's I think it's Kieran holding Dan rather than like the other mm. way around. And I'm pretty sure Kieran will stay out there as long as Dan does. I think Dan will stay out there a while. Mm. I think Kieran mm. will stay too. I feel like that's a good place to end the episode on. Aww. Welcome to Can Trip where we make you laugh and then we make you cry. <sighs> Thank you for listening to what was this episode seventeen of Cantrip? Seventeen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. If you're listening on Spotify, follow the show, leave a review. If you're listening on YouTube, like and subscribe, leave a comment. We always have something to comment. Tasty buttons. Tasty buttons. Tasty buttons. buttons. Yell at us on Tumblr. All right then. Yell at us on Tumblr. <laughs> if you were sad yes. about this, yell Please at us do. on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Or in the Discord. All right, both of those are linked in the description. 
this word thing. of mouth helps us out a lot mm -hmm. you'd be surprised so if you want to make your friends sad <laughs> tell your friends about how you cried <laughs> over over orc <laughs> orc hugging hugging satyr man and everybody's crying <laughs> <laughs> Tell your friends, we got gay people, we got sad people. Sometimes they're and sometimes gay and sad. they have a dragon who's you incredibly know? unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> they have unsettled dragon. The Patreon is also linked in the description. We do early access and special things. There were some bloopers from this episode that'll be in, uh, Ooh, in a blooper you know, reel soon. <laughs> do you know what? You can actually go on the Patreon now. Uh -huh. The lyrics to the Ballad of Daniel Thorns. Yes! <gasps> yes! Ooh. Give them! Yes, they're on the clock. Why did I think you were gonna say, you know what can go on the Patreon now? The pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon exclusive pronouns. You have to I love pronouns. it here. Um, anyway, bye! bye.